wanted to try diamond painting but didn't know where to start, then this video is for you. Keep watching. everyone, welcome to our Crazy Life Scotland. My name's Fiona and this is episode one of my new craft and chat series. If you're new here, I have been doing lots of vlogs and hauls and reviews and things like that on this channel for a while, but more and more people are asking me to show craft videos because I do all sorts of different crafts. And so I thought I would now dedicate one video a week to crafts and it might increase if more and more people want to see it, we will wait and see. This episode, which like I say is episode one, I am going to do a diamond painting tutorial for beginners. It's going to be right from the beginning, what you get in the kit, how you fix it, how you do it and how you finish it, the whole lot. And what I'm going to be using in this video is this gorgeous stitch coaster. Now I was gifted this by New Craft Day and I'll link the video for you if you've not seen it yet. I work quite a lot with New Craft Day. They don't pay me, I'm not sponsored. However, they do give me products now and again for me to show you just a range of the products that they do and to do a review of the products for you. So I thought this stitch one is perfect. It's a coaster, you can see at the back it's wood. It's a coaster and it's a nice small project. So I'm gonna use that for this tutorial. I am intending to do it all from start to finish in this video. I will speed some of it up but while I'm doing it I will chat to you and I'm going to chat to you about the diamond painting but in general this series I'll just be chatting about life and whatever comes to my mind when I'm crafting. The good thing about crafting is sometimes it just lets you switch off. Anyway, the other thing that I do want to talk to you about in this video is what you would like to see from this series. I'll give you more information on that while I'm doing the actual diamond painting. So you might want to grab yourself a cuppa, a wee tea or a coffee or something a bit stronger if you prefer. Who knows, there's no judging here, we're all friends. Yeah, so grab it, get comfortable and let's start crafting and chatting. So I'm going to open the kit for you and let you see what you get. Of course you get your main item. In this case it's a little wooden coaster. You can see it's wood on the back. Absolutely gorgeous. Abby, my 18 year old daughter, loves stitch. So I thought this would be perfect for her to keep in her room. So I thought I would use this because first of all it's a nice small project and won't take long. But second of all, just to let you see that diamond painting doesn't have to be on a canvas. It can come in all shapes and sizes. And if you're not keen on doing like a big diamond painting and then leaving it lying about or having the hassle of framing it and displaying it and everything, this sort of thing can be really good. So th this is a coaster, you get key rings, you get lamps, you get makeup bags, storage vouchers, you get so many different things. I will link New Craft Day down below for you. Now, like I said, I'm not sponsored by them. I have been gifted this, but... Since I started working with them, it's the only place I get my diamond paintings from now because their value is brilliant and they've got such a big range. Anyway, so when you open your kit, you'll get your main piece that you're going to work on. You will also get what I call a boat because I think it looks like a boat. It's a drill tray. I'll take this out for you. It's a drill tray. It has got sides on it so your little drills don't fall out. It's got lines on it to help them line up so it's easier for you to pick them up and you get a diamond painting pen or tool. This has basically just got a little metal nib on the bottom that's hollow and this is what you use to pick up the, the little drills and in order to make this sticky to pick them up you get a little block of wax and I will explain further how to use the wax and when to use it and things like that. What I will say is it's not the drills that are sticky. It's not the little diamonds that you put on the picture that are sticky. It's the picture itself. So you will see here, it's shiny, it's reflective. That's because there is a protective coating on it. If you tried to put the drills on there, they would just fall off. Because like I say, they're not sticky. It's the picture that they stick to. I'm going to have to put my glasses on. 
okay, so you can see, can you see, I have peeled the, the sticky bit, eh, the plastic back. That's just a coating to um, protect the stickiness. Can you hear? Sorry about the dog's barking. That's sticky. So you need to remember to take the cover off before you actually try to start sticking anything to it. And of course you get the drills. Now that's basically the technical term for the little tiny bits of, I don't know if they're plastic or resin or what they are, that you put on the actual picture. Now you get two types, you get normal drills that are sort of matte finished and you get special drills which are, can be different shapes but they can also be quite glittery and shiny. So they're more like little diamantes. You see that? So in this case, this is how they come. Sometimes they come already in little bags that are resealable, um, but more often than not, they will come like this. And each bag has got a number on it. So number one, two, all the way up to six in this case. And you will see on the, you will hopefully see, on the actual picture itself. I don't know what's wrong with this camera. It's not focusing. But the picture itself has got numbers on it and it's the number on the picture that you use to determine which drill you're going to actually put where. So that is in general what you get in your pack. Right, so the first thing that you want to do once you've opened everything from your pack is sort out your drills. Because there's only six here, it's not so important, but generally, once you open the pouch, you want to make sure that they're stored somewhere safe, that they're not going to spill. Um, quite often in packs, you will get uh, a few little bags that are resealable, uh, so you can use them. If there's only six like this, you can just snip a tiny corner off and then like paper clip them so that they don't fall out. But to me, it's worthwhile investing in some kind of little tub. Like I use these and um, this has got seven different compartments in it. So I've got six colours, so this tray will be fine. And what I do is I put a sticker on the top of each one and I do it in pencil so you can see I'll be able to rub that out because this was from an old painting. I'll be able to rub out the number and then if I put number one in here, I'll write number one on the label, number two, etc. So when you're doing your diamond painting, it's really easy to see at a glance what colour it is that you're looking for. So I'm going to turn you around and start doing this and uh, just let you see what I mean. Now, I have to apologise for the setup because I am waiting for a new tripod to come and that will make it a lot easier to film craft videos, but it's not here yet and I want to get this filmed. So it will be a bit amateurish today, but bear with me and they will get better from next week, hopefully. Just a normal pencil with a rubber. I'm going to rub all of these out first so that I don't um, get confused once I put them in because I'm easily confused. <laughs> right, so you can either put the packet in and then write the number on. Hold on. See these phone calls that are... This call is from bank security and they're not. It's total scams. Right, so what to do is cut them all, first of all. Making sure that you're not cutting actually into the packet so the gels don't spill. Right, let's have a looky. So here we have number one. Like I said, you can write one to six and then put them in. But I quite like to make sure I'm definitely doing the right one. So I put it in and then write the number on. So I'm just going to snip the corner off. Lift this up and carefully pour them in because you don't want to spill them. You usually do get plenty, but if you spill them, it's a bit of a nightmare. So that was number one, so I'm going to write number one on the label. I've got number two here. I'm going to, oh, number two here. I'm going to do the same.
number two. If you're quite shaky like me and you're worried that you're going to spill the drills when you're putting them into the tub, you might find it easier to actually put it in to your drill tray first of all. And that way it can be easier to control them going into the tub. That was number three. Right, so I'll carry on doing this a bit faster for you. So if you're doing a large diamond painting that might have, you know, a lot of one colour, like it might have a big white background, you will sometimes get two or more pouches or packets of the same colour. That's okay, you can either put them all into the one section at the start if it will fit, or you can just not open, like you can just put one in and then leave the other one sealed and somewhere safe so that when you need them, you can open it and put them in. So here we go, I have now got one to six in my um, little box. This is all my gel colours. So uh, it's time to start looking at our shape. I just love this. Now, everybody has got their own place to start. I used to start at the bottom right and then work up because I, I saw that in a tutorial somewhere, but Recently, I found it easier to start at the top left and work from left to right, top to bottom, like you do when you're writing something. Um, because I find that way you're not putting your hand over all of the, the gels that you've just put on and it stays a bit cleaner that way. But it's entirely up to you. What I would say is don't take off all of the plastic coating at the one time, especially if it is a bigger... Um, painting that you're doing if it's a small key ring that's fine because what will happen is if all of the glue is exposed you'll start getting dirt and hairs and oos is that just a scottish word oos oos is like bits of fluff off your jumper and things and um, that will all stick to it plus your hand will stick to it and it will just get generally grubby you might even um lose some of the stickiness so just take off the bit of um, protective covering over the area that you're working. So I'm going to start with this left ear and I will probably take all of the paper off just for the ear. So I'll expose that because it shouldn't take me too long to do that. If you want you can just do a tiny wee bit at a time but I'm going to do this and I'm going to, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to actually cut it. You can if it's a bigger one, hold on. Oh, that was me getting a call back from the ambulance service that I've not actually been waiting on. They had the wrong number. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I've cut off the protective film for this ear. That's the area I'm going to work on. And let me put you a wee bit closer. You can see here, that's better. It's focusing better now. I am going to start with the outside, which is number five. And then I will do number six. So I'm going to look for number five on my drills which is there. And as you can see, it usually does correspond to the colour. So it's a dark blue on the ear and it's a dark blue in the drills. So I'm just going to put some of my number five drills into my little tray. I'll try not to call it a boat. Oh, I've got a bit of paper in there. Okay, so let's have a look at these. As you can see, when I put them in there, they're lying all over the place. Some have got the blue side sticking up and some have got the silver side sitting up. You want to pick them up with the colour side up. So, for example, oh, it's hard doing it in the camera. This one here is upside down because it's silver we're seeing rather than blue. This one here is the right way up. Now, if sometimes the drills are the same colour on both sides, which you'll probably see later on. So if you're not sure at all, it's the drill, the, the right way up is, the drill is rounded. Can you see that little sort of dome on top? Whereas the silver ones are flat. So you want to pick up rounded side up and I've got a hair in here already. I've got four dogs, so I always get hairs everywhere. Right, so what you can see now 
if I just give it a wee sort of dunt, a dunt, that's a technical term, most of them are sitting the right way up and you can see the, the fall within the little grooves on the tray and that's the way that you want them. Don't worry about the ones that are upside down. You can be there forever if you want, getting them the right way up. But I usually, just as long as most of them are the right way up, I use those ones first and then give the tray another shake. With the tool, just as it comes, you won't be able to pick them up. Oop. Especially not if you throw it away. So if I try to pick that up, oh, it did. <laughs> it's calling me a liar. Generally, it's very difficult to pick them up if you've not got any wax on your little tool. So that's where this comes in. And this also has a protective film on both sides, so you need to take that off before you try to use it. I just peel it back and then put it back on. And all you need to do to get some wax on your tool is just stick it in like that. You can see the wee hole there, and there's now some wax on our tool. So it should be ready to pick up nice and easily like that. So let's actually get to it. Try to put you a wee bit flatter. Can't wait to get this new tripod. Hugo, when he was a puppy, ate the last one. He didn't eat it, he chewed the cable and broke it. Right, so, it's up to you what bit you want to start on. I, oh, look what I've done. There we go. <laughs> that is what not to do. But if you do, don't panic. First of all, take them off the actual canvas because that's sticky and you don't want them sticking where you don't want them. If you know what I mean. Okay, so first of all, don't panic. Just gently take them off. Like so. These ones here should come off. These ones should come off because that's another reason not to take all of the protective film off. So if I bring my wee boat over. There we go. And you do actually get little desk vacuums that can soak them up for you. But. I usually just put them to the edge of my desk. You can't see. There we go. It's all good. They're all back in there with her hair. I do love my dogs, but their barking and their hairs are very annoying. <laughs> you can give it a shake. You can give it a dunt and get them mostly the right way. Let's try that again, shall we? I'm all fingers and thumbs because I'm recording it. Right, and after all that, I've still got one on my pen. So you just basically try to get it as close to the circle as possible and pop it down. And as you can see, it's sticky. So if I go like that, it's not going to come off. It's the picture that's sticky, remember? Pick up another one, pop it on. Pick up another one, pop it on. Simple as that. If you've kind of, if you've not got it in exactly the place you want it, you can move it slightly. There we go. So I'll carry on doing number five and have a little chat to you. So I have been diamond painting for oh, maybe about five, six years now. And I've done all sorts of different paintings. My favourite ones to do are ones that you don't need to mount yourself. So you can get some diamond paintings that are already on a canvas. So as soon as you do them, that's it, it's ready to, to hang up or display. And that's the other reason I like doing these ones, because once it's done, that's it. You don't need to frame it or do anything like that. Now, that one's just sticking in no more. I'm getting to the edge here where I've got the, the plastic covering. And it is coming off a bit, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna go any further there. And of course you can move your your painting around, it doesn't have to be in the one place, just so it makes it easier for you. And again, you want oh look at that hair. Oh, oh again, you want to avoid putting your hand over the, the sticky bit if at all possible. It's difficult when you've got a bigger um picture. I just find diamond painting so therapeutic. I just get lost in the wee world of my own. I usually sit and watch YouTube videos while I'm doing it. So 
So some of this video will be, I'll speed up some of the video when I'm actually placing the drills. Um, but I'll chat with you as a voiceover instead of chatting while I'm doing it. So I've got my last one of number five here for the moment. Again, avoid taking all the, the covering off to do all of the number fives at the one time because you're just going to get in a sticky mess. Just stick to the one area. Right, so all my number fives in this area are finished and now I need to look for number six. So I'm going to take my little tub. I'm going to open number five and I'm going to try not to spill them as I... Sometimes they can have a bit of static and they all stick together. It can be quite strange. Right, so number six now is what I'm looking for. And it's lovely pink ones. Look at them. They are lovely. I do like them. If you're going, if you think that you might get distracted and forget what colour you're on, you can leave the lid open of your little tub or leave, if you've got them in little bags, leave that little bag beside you just as a reminder if you get distracted and have to go away and come back. But if you are leaving the lid open, just make sure that you put it well out of reach so you're not spilling it like I did earlier. Right, so I'm just going to do the same again. And it's up to you whether you want to go round in a circle or do it in a straight line. It's entirely up to you. It's your painting. You do whatever you feel comfortable with. So... Like I said, this is my first video in this series. I did have another, a separate craft channel before, but it became too much to have two channels running. So I stopped doing the craft one um, and I thought I, it would be easier just to dedicate a video a week to crafting here. Um, and that way... I'm not getting myself confused and missing comments and things like that because I love people chatting to me in the comments but I'm always scared that I'm going to miss them if I've got two channels. So I've decided just to have the one channel. The other channel is still open and I will link it for you but back then I was doing a lot more adult colouring which I don't tend to do now because when I got my Cricut machine I became too distracted. I do still like to colour now and again, but I don't do it... Um, like I don't dedicate time to it or anything like that. So, diamond painting is one of my oldest crafts and I still really enjoy it. So I'm happy to do diamond painting videos for you. Um, now, this is obviously a beginner's tutorial, but I do also have a diamond painting that I've just finished. And I am going to, I've not sealed it or framed it yet because I thought that might be quite a good tutorial to do because when I first started diamond painting I didn't have a clue what to do with it once it was finished. So I thought that might help people if I do a video of that. Um, I also, like I mentioned, I've got a Cricut, um, it's a Cricut Explorer 2, it's not a Cricut Maker, um, which means there's certain things that I can't do on it that you can on the maker, right? So there we go. Got more the right way up now. Um, so I do a lot of crafts with that. I am pretty good with Cricut Design Space, or I was. They've done a lot of updates lately and uh, I'm not too sure on some of it. I need to refresh my knowledge by watching some tutorials on YouTube um, but yeah, I like to design a lot of my crafts in Design Space, which is a software that you get with the Cricut. Um, but I also sometimes make designs in Canva. So I am happy to do tutorials on how to design things in Design Space or on Canva. Um, it's up to you. I'm not much of a card maker. I did start trying to do that, but to be honest... I wasn't great at it, <laughs> but I don't have a problem getting back into it again. I'm just going to add some more drills to my little tray here. It makes it easier for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm not likely to do card making tutorials unless someone specifically asks me to because I'm not very good at them and I don't do a lot of them. 
Mainly, if you've watched my main channel, you will know I love Christmas. So it's mainly going to be Christmas crafts that I do. However, if I'm doing a tutorial, I've got other things that isn't necessarily Christmas. So I'm happy to show you anything that you want in terms of like if it's Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or anything like that, if you're looking for any crafts for that or how to make a Mother's Day present or a Valentine present, that sort of thing, I'm happy to do that for you. But um, with my Cricut, I usually make like t-shirts or recently because it's I've been doing a lot of Christmas crafts, I was personalising Christmas stockings and little Christmas elves for people and I do that using my Cricut machine and heat transfer vinyl which is basically stuff that you iron on so I do a lot of that that I'm happy to show you right that's that year finished so now that I've finished that year how gorgeous is that can you see it shining it's just so lovely um I am going to probably take about that much of the protective film off because I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to get all of that done but then you know before I have to go and do something else if you know you've only got like 10 minutes to do it just take a tiny wee bit off or if you do take a bigger bit off and you think oh I need to go and do such and such a thing you can if you keep your film like there's oh, oh, there's the ear that I took off if you keep it you can pop it back over it just to protect it while you're away so there's no hairs and dust and things lying on it. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this off. So yeah, as I was saying, I, um, I'm happy to do to show you heat transfer vinyl. I also cut normal vinyl for like self-adhesive vinyl for sticking to frames or pictures that, or card or anything like that. So I'm going to do to about there. Now you can, if you want, just crease it and you can put something heavy, like your scissors, on there so that you can work on the area. But then when you're finished, you can put the, the film back down. That's always a possibility for you. But I know I'm going to get this finished today, so I am going to just cut it. So now that I've cut it, I'm going to go, have I got any of the number six in this area? Since I've got my number six out and yes, there's a few down here. So I'm just going to do those while I've got the, the drills out anyway. Um, yeah, so I used vinyl, self-adhesive vinyl, um, heat transfer vinyl a lot. I also do sublimation. Right, I'm going to take, I'm going to get my number five drills again. So I'm just going to put this away in my number six. Open number five. There we go. And give them a wee shake to make sure they're the right way up. And you'll notice I have actually put a lot of drills on without act, without even needing to add more wax. You don't want to overload your tool with wax because um, the wax is pink and if you overload it, it's going to come off onto your drills and it's not very pretty. You can wipe it away at the end, but I just think it's always better to use just a tiny wee bit and then only top up when you're finding it difficult to start picking your drills up. Oh, I nearly did it again. See, because I'm I'm looking at it over my, my phone, it's hard to see what I'm doing. Anyway, oh, another hair. Um, so, yeah, I was saying I also do sublimation, which is a particular, it's a specific kind of ink which you can put onto mugs or clothes or basically anything that accept, that anything that's the right material for 
the ink and when you heat it up onto your t-shirt or um, your mug, whatever it is, the ink comes off the paper and goes into your mug or your t-shirt and it's a lot more permanent than just the iron on vinyl. So it's not going to come out in the wash or anything like that. It's not going to, you can't feel it. So it's not like it can't peel off or um, start to crack over time. It's actually inside the material, which is fab. And the other good thing about it is you can do a lot more detailed pictures with it. Like you can do photos, you can put photos on things. Whereas if you were trying to do that with vinyl, it would be way too many layers it wouldn't work oh I thought I had picked one up there and I hadn't <laughs> um it would be way too much work to try to layer it it just wouldn't look right at all so sublimation is really good for that so I'm happy to do sublimation tutorials as well if you would like basically what I'm trying to say is I will do on this in this series I'm happy to just show you what I'm doing craft-wise. I'm happy to show you items that I've finished or tell you about projects I'm going to start and how I'm going to do them. I'm happy to do tutorials. I'm happy to just chat. Basically, I want to be led by you. Let me know if there's anything specific that you want to see. A lot of people have been asking for a diamond painting tutorial, which is why I decided to do this one first. Is that sticky? No. So, yeah, that's why I decided to do this one first. And I thought I would just have a wee chat with you and find out what you want. So if there's, oh, if there's anything specific that you want, please let me know. Because it's your channel as much as it is mine. There's no point in me making videos if nobody's interested I'm going to want to watch them. I don't want to waste my time or everybody else's time. So let me know what you want to see. Right, so that's the number five all done. That's not quite sticky enough up there. So I'm going to leave that one. And I'm going to go on to the number ones now. So I'm going to put my drills away. Number one. There we go. Get this here. See what I mean about the static? Can you see those ones, little, little ones there hanging on? Put them out the way. Right, and now I poured them into my tray and they're all bundled up and some are, most of them are the wrong way. So just give it a little shake and they do tend to pretty much fall the right way. So I'm going to do the number ones now. So I'll give you a break from my talking just now and I will speed this bit up and give you a bit of music. Right, that's all the number ones that are exposed. Oh no, there's one wee, one more wee one down there. Now, as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit trickier to lift up my drill. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the number ones away. Oh, there's a little pink one in there. Take that out. Sometimes you will get drills that are slightly mixed up. Um... You know, it's not an exact science when factories are making them. It's easy enough for drills to get put in the wrong bag. So just don't worry about it. If it's one that you definitely know belongs to a different number, like that pink one I would imagine belongs in there, I could put it in. But generally, I'll just move it to the side. So I'm looking for number two now. No number two jokes now. <laughs> right, so... Like this is one of the examples where the back is the same colour as the front. So that one there is upside down and you can tell because it's flat side up instead of the round domed side up. 
Now, because I was finding it difficult to pick the drills up, I'm going to put another redrop wax on my pen. So again, just take the peel back the cover, just push it in like so, and you've got some on your pen. And here we go again for number two. If you make a mistake, which is easily done, especially if you're you start daydreaming like I do when I when I'm diamond painting because it's just so relaxing. If you realise that you've made a mistake, it's easy enough to fix. So if I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I did that, I put a black one, which is number two, on a number four space, and I'd be like, "Ow, oh, help! What do I do?" You can. Use your fingers or tweezers or anything that you've got lying about just to lift it. It will stick. It will be a nuisance, but you will eventually, as you can see, it's, you will be able to take it off, put it back and then just carry on. It will still be sticky. Okay. Obviously, you don't want to take scissors and really scrub at it because that would ruin it and it would take the stickiness off it. But if you're very gentle, you can pull the diamond off and you can use the same one again, just in the right place. That's not a problem. Also, if you lift one that's upside down like that and try to put it down, it will stick, but not very well. And you'll realise, oh, it's upside down. You can just turn it the right way up and slide it to where it's meant to be. If you can see that the wax is peeling off your tool, you can either wipe it away and get some more, or you can, I usually just sort of push it back in um, so that it's not going to come off on my drills. But the pen's still going to be nice and sticky. Right, so that's all the number twos. You can see how quickly... This is actually um, taking shape. Look at it. Isn't it lovely? So the only other bit now, now, that's just caught my eye. I can see some white there. So I want to pop that. I want to slide it back up properly. There we go. That's better. You can't see the white as much. It's not an exact science. It's never going to be perfect. But that is the joys of handmade projects. It's yours, it's unique, it's never going to be the same as another one. Right, so it's number four that I want to do now, and then I'll have finished this little section. When you are sticking the, the drills down, it's helpful if it's as directly under you, your head as possible, and that way it's easier to make sure that you're putting them on in the right position, putting them in the circle properly. Because I'm sitting back a little bit, there probably will be a few that need nudged properly into position. Right, so number four, number four. These are the nice sort of sparkly clear diamantes. There we go. And there's only a few of them to go. There we go. So that is that section done. I am now going to put you on a time lapse. I'll either do a voiceover and chat to you if there's anything I think of, or I'll just give you some music to listen to. Some diamond paintings have white covers on them instead of the see-through one. Don't worry about that, it's exactly the same thing. And the tray might look slightly different, it might be a different colour or have a little spout on it. Again, don't worry about it, it's the same thing. Also, the order that you do the drilling is entirely up to you. Uh, just make sure you do one section right, at a time. this is how it is looking so far. It's looking really good, doesn't it? And what I love about diamond painting is... When you're sort of halfway through it, you can see the difference. So it's so flat and boring there. But look how raised and 3D and sparkly it is there. It's so nice. Oh, be quiet, Hugo. And you've probably seen enough of me doing the actual diamond painting now. I don't want to bore you to death. So I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. And then I'm going to come back to you and talk about finishing it. 
Right, that is me now finished. Are you ready? Do, 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 do. How gorgeous is that? It's so cute. Abby's going to be so chuffed. Um, now, so it's finished in that all the drills are on. However, it's not actually finished. With some diamond paintings, especially ones that are being put in frames, once all the diamonds are on or the drills are on, it's finished. And if you want, you can frame it. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on that. However, if you've got something like this, such so as a coaster or maybe a key ring, anything that's going to be handled a lot or going to have something sitting on it, you want to seal it. So I'm just about to go through what I do when it's time to seal it. Let's turn you around. Right, I have already been through how I seal the diamond painting, but when I went to edit it, I realised I hadn't actually pressed record. So it's been sealed, but I'll show you how I do it. So the first thing that I would do is I would take a, a brush, a clean brush, like a, I use a toothbrush, but you can use any soft brush that you want. And you want to just basically give it a wee brush down to make sure there's no hair or dust or bits of wax or anything on your diamond painting then once you've done that you want to make sure that they're all stuck properly down sometimes they'll maybe like slightly overlap and then it would fall off in the future so to make sure that doesn't happen you can take i've got a brayer tool but you can take oh, i don't know a bottle or, or a rolling pin or just anything that isn't going to damage your drills or your diamond painting and just give it a wee roll to make sure they're all stuck down properly and then once you have done that, you want to seal it. Now, you can use all sorts of different things. Mod Podge is one of the most popular, but generally any craft glue that dries clear or sealer that dries clear would do. I personally use this, which is Crystal Art Shimmer Sealer. And I like this because it's specifically made for diamond painting. And um, when it does dry, it dries clear, but also with a bit of a shimmer. I don't know if... You, oh, there's hairs in there. Can you see on the edge there where it's dried that the lid has a bit of a sparkle to it? So I like to use this. Now, I'll put the link for it down below. I got it online and it's relatively extensive, but I've done loads, of, sealed loads of diamond paintings and there's still more than three quarters of it left. So you only need a tiny wee bit. So to seal it, you take another brush, I use a, a, a different toothbrush, I use a pink one for brushing and the blue one for sealing. And you don't want to use a lot, just pop a tiny wee bit on your brush like that. That's actually quite a lot, I don't need that much anyway. Um, and then just start wherever you want and you want to dab it rather than brushing it. And that way, all of the glue gets in between the little drills, which is what you're aiming to do. Because you want to make sure that the drills are all stuck in place, that they're not going to move. And you want to try to avoid getting too much on top of the actual drill. Because you don't want to take away all the nice shimmer and things. Like I say, it's not too bad with this because it shimmers once it's dry anyway. But with a normal glue or Mod Podge, you want to make sure that it's sealing it in place without actually dulling the shimmer. So you would do that all over, which I have actually already done. And then following that, just to make sure your, um, your drills don't get dulled down, I usually take just a normal baby wipe like this. I pop it over my finger like that. And then I just gently rub over the drills that I've sealed and that way you might be able to see the drip, the actual drills clean up but it leaves the sealer where you want it in between all the drills. There we go. So I will put a picture of the completed product once the sealer's dry on at the end for you but as for now, that is everything for this very first episode of Craft and Chat. I honestly really hope you enjoy it. I hope this is the sort of thing that you're looking for. But please let me know in the comments below. The other thing that I do quite a lot is crochet. So if you want to see any crochet 
anything that I have crocheted or how to crochet. Again, there's much better tutorials out there than me probably from proper professionals, but I've been crocheting for years and years. So I know the basics, maybe a wee bit more than the basics. Um, my favourite crochet technique is corner to corner, but I am digressing. So I like crochet, I do crochet, I do diamond painting, I do cricket crafts, I do sublimation, I do... what else? Oh, latch hooking. I did do a tutorial on how to latch hook. I did part one of it on my other channel and totally forgot to do part two. And then when I was looking for something else on YouTube, my first part of the tutorial came up in the feed and it's had 8.2 thousand views. And I was like, holy bajoli, that's a lot more than any of my other videos. So I think I'm going to get my latch hook out again and finish it and do the second part of that video. So that'll be one of the crafty chats as well. But if there's anything specific that you want to see, please let me know. I'm not very good at painting. I don't really paint. But anything to do with any of the crafts that I've mentioned, I am more than happy to show you. If it's something new, I'm happy to give it a go as well. In a recent haul, I got what's called a cross latch kit. And that's how I ended up finding my own um, tutorial. I was looking to see if there was any tutorials on YouTube because I've not got a clue how to do it. And there wasn't. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. That's something that I'm definitely going to do on video and see if we can figure out how to do it. But that's the sort of thing. Resin, that's the other thing that I do. I'm not good at resin yet, but I will, I'm practicing quite a lot now with resin, both UV resin and epoxy resin. So if you want to see any of that, let me know as well. So I'm going to head off. I really do hope you've enjoyed this and I hope people watch it because it's going to be a huge waste of time otherwise. Anyway, if you have enjoyed it, please do hit that thumbs up button, especially on my crafty videos, because I want to be able to get out there to other crafters as well for them to... Um, come and watch my craft, not just the people who are subscribed to me for vlogging. And subscribe if you haven't already, I would love to have you. Like I say, I'm definitely going to do at least one craft video a week now. And talk to me in the comments below, love talking to you and I will always reply. It might take me a little while, but I'll definitely always reply unless YouTube hides your comments, which it does do occasionally. And I'm Haven again, so I'm going to head off now and I will see you either tomorrow for another vlog or next week for another crafty chat. Thanks everyone, bye! And here is a completed coaster once it is all sealed and dried and I think you'll agree it looks beautiful, it's very sparkly and Abby's going to love it.